Hey, while well, I'm still under embargo and I'm unable to actually do a review, I thought I would show some advanced techniques with Sugikage. So he has this down A that causes a crumple state. Normally it's really hard to count the uh, combo off it, but if you cancel into his down down A, then you go into his counter and that has less recovery. So you can actually use that to continue the combo and even make an infinite. Like that. Yeah, yeah, really easy infinites going on enemies that can be crumpled. Now, also, you can do uh, two hits of his B string or his normal attack string. You can go into the lock on and then don't go into his quarter circle forward attack. What that will do is that will cause a crumple as well. Oops. So that's a good way to combo into his lock on attack, and then you can start doing this loop. There's a full combo. Screen shake in this game, I can definitely say that needs to be toned down. <laughs> Gives me a headache. Sometimes you don't have enough range to actually go into the infinite off a of crumple. They can just do stuff like that to try to continue the damage. So now I will go into some pretty good universal builds that you can use for most of the characters. That's basically how you play him. You always want to try to keep that combo going as much as you can. So for the sword, what I usually use, I really only use like two of them. Uh, I'll use the flare. The flare is good for leveling up off the final boss. Uh, you can really level up easily that way. Unfortunately, I'm under embargo at the moment, so I cannot show the final boss, but when that uh, gets lifted in a couple days, then I'll go ahead and make a guide for that. And basically, this just turns it into an offensive burst. You know, it's kind of like Guilty Gear, where you know you do a burst and someone gets knocked away. This makes it do damage as well. So you can use that to really pile on the damage at a low level and kind of brute force the final boss and get a bunch of experience that way. I've actually tested you can get all the way up to level 17 uh, by beating the final boss once with that technique. So if you want to reset a, a bunch to get it to work one time, you can do it that way. Now I normally use Neptune. Uh, Neptune basically gives you hyper armor. Uh, towards the end of the bonus missions, the, they start to get really unfair uh, unless you start using other characters. If you're using like, one of the main characters in the story, like the ones that you can actually play as that they added uh, beyond the first four, then you're going to have a really hard time getting through those missions because you're just going to be bombarded by enemies doing like AoE attacks and, and <laughs> kind of hitting you from both sides. So this is actually really nice to have because it gives you the hyper armor and you can kind of, you know, kind of whittle through some of the more difficult to deal with enemies. And if you have enough MP and you hit things often enough, you'll get enough MP back to keep it going for quite a while. I've had him stay when he was maxed, I actually reset his level. I've had him stay in burst mode for like a whole lap, a whole like map or level once. <laughs> so I really only use these two. The other ones I haven't really seen much of a, a point for. Aside from the regeneration on certain maps, uh, this can actually be more useful. 
because it'll give you HP to kind of mitigate all the pretty much unavoidable damage you'll be taking sometimes when you really get into the end game. Now the rest of the stuff really depends. Uh, I should also mention that some characters cannot equip the Neptune family of swords that give you the hyper armor. So you may have to go with something else. You can usually just go with Flare with them. I don't think there's anybody who can't equip Flare. Or you can go with a regeneration. Those are pretty much the, the go-to swords to equip. So the good ones like Boss Slayer, High level Slayer is pretty good for high, higher level foes. If you put one of these on in the end game missions, it can help quite a bit. Now for badges, uh, the boss badge, any of the, the badges that give you uh, damage versus the bosses are pretty good. And if you're playing as Ali, uh, I don't know why the game is designed like this, but her bombs create the, the flame element and she can get hit by them. Basically there's friendly fire on her bombs. So if you play as her, then you basically have to give up this item slot to this. <laughs> uh, otherwise, these are pretty much just uh, dependent on whatever map you're doing. If you're getting annoyed with an enemy doing some kind of status effect that's uh, you know, really starting to piss you off, then you can try to get these charms and kind of mitigate it that way. And these are all pretty boring. It's either uh, you know attack or physical, magic, or defense up. So you pretty much just uh, equip those as you want to spec your character in. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, they removed a, a lot of the customization in this game. Uh, I'm not an expert on the original game, but in the original game, it was kind of like Diablo and a lot of, you know, Western RPG games where you had uh, a specific amount of skill points and you could put them into any stat as you saw fit. You cannot do that anymore, so it really limits the customization quite a bit. You, you can't really do a whole lot with it. Most of your customization is just going to come from the gear. And there's a lot of stuff that's just clearly better than everything else. So I haven't really seen much of a reason to deviate from any of this. I've really only deviated from some of this, like, maybe a handful of times. One of which was Ali with the, uh, the flame charm, like I said. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys gear up your characters and learn how to play Su Sukikage as well. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.